this is about business, right? So we've got some, uh, some delicacies and some wines when we're done to mix, but this is about business. And the reason we're looking at this is the opportunities. Look at the opportunities, but also the threats, right? So there's competition. How do we grow? What do we do? Think about timing. When new, new hotels will open up, what are you going to do for your refresh? Let's think about what this means. I believe, and Victor's going to help us out, think about the future, the ecosystem from Wheelie to Ashburn is going to become its own little piece of economic opportunity for us. It's not everybody gets on at Ashburn, just picks people up to go down to D.C. to do business. It's about being right here. The opportunity to do the reverse commute, the opportunity for headquarters that we begin to, to grow here and even relocate is going to create tremendous opportunities. More people will be able to walk, bike, scooter to work and not have to worry about clogging up the roads. This is it. Right? You talk about, everybody talks about rest in downtown. We know it's the greater rest in chamber. Right? We talk about Herndon as the town, but it's the Herndon zip code. It's the greater Herndon area. And we think about this region, we have great opportunities. And so any chance I get to tell Victor that he needs to spend more time out here and not be in Tyson's, we're really excited to have you on board, Victor. And if I get a round of applause for Victor and the opportunities. Thank you. Uh, to give you, this is, this is the stationery I'm just going to update you on. Um, it's an aerial view from uh, last summer, I guess. Uh, so just to acquaint yourselves, we're um, here. That is the Wheelie Reston East Station in the uh, median of the toll road. Uh, to talk first about the project that I'm intimately familiar with, the Comstock Reston Station project. Since I last presented to you, uh, we have grown a bit. So this is the rest and station piece that was associated with, with the actual public-private partnership with the county in the underground garage. This office building right here, the Helmut Jan Signature Building, uh, will be fully leased within the next, uh, perhaps by the end of the year. Uh, we have, um, Google has taken a large piece of space. We're building two office buildings. Uh, here on the toll road, one of them is about 60% leased and the other has significant interest. So people are coming. They are riding the silver line. They're coming to work. They are very interested in being in this corridor. Um, since we spoke, this is the uh, promenade district of Reston Station. This is where the Marriott Hotel will be going um, along with residential and uh, some more office. And we also uh, purchased the aqua blue piece on the south side of the toll road. So that is the Commerce District of Reston Station. So there is an awful lot happening. To give you a, a little, another look, um, whether you're in real estate, in care, these are the, um, this is all already zoned and approved. Uh, we are going in for a modification to switch the siting of the hotel, but we have, um, lots of activity coming into play. And in keeping with what the rest in, the Fairfax County planners did with the Reston Comprehensive Plan, the goal is to be 50% residential and 50% commercial. And you'll see that with the others. Uh, this beautiful big fat O, because I am not that adept, is on uh, the site <laughs> of another property. Um, and if you'll see, it sits its access point is Sunrise Valley Drive, uh, and it's at the corner of Sunrise Valley Drive and Wheelie Avenue. That is, um, pardon me, we'll go to the next. That is Campus Commons, and they have two office buildings that they're looking to keep, but they're looking to add um, residential units, 1,100 of them. So again, that will get them toward that 50-50 mix. They will have small support retail. Um, they uh, are in front of the Fairfax County Planning Commission tomorrow night and scheduled to be before the Board of Supervisors for final approval in, on October 15th. Um, other new activity, this uh, little O up there is um, a property called Golf Course Overlook. It is on Sunset Hills, on the north side of Sunset Hills. It looks out onto the Hidden Creek Golf Course. And they have been, um, they were approved by the Planning Commission um, for 413 units in uh, a high-rise building. And they will be before the Board of Supervisors tomorrow night for their final approval. 
Um, and then just a few other things going on. The big arrow points to Isaac Newton Square, which is on, again on the north side of Sunset Hills Road, and it is currently low rise uh, flex buildings. Um, and they are, uh, were, are actually um, approved by the Planning Commission last week. Uh, they'll go before the Board of Supervisors on October 15th. This is big. This is a 32-acre parcel. It, uh, it is unique in this transit station area because the, the planning folks wanted 90% residential and 10% uh, small specialty service groups to support that residential. But basically, it's residential that really bumps up the whole wheelie area into a 50-50 split, making the best use of our multimodal transportation options there. Um, 210 units, eight different buildings, uh, for sale product, for rent product, and uh, to the delight of all of our citizens um, a full-size playing field. So that's exciting. Uh, I, the Planning Commission approved it last week, and um, October 15th, it's headed to the Board of Supervisors. So that kind of gives you an update as to uh, what's happening here. Investors are here. Uh, users are here. People want to be in the corridor. And we, as the business people, we have been and are making things happen um, for our economic development in the region. Um, so thank you very much. We look forward to hearing um, from uh, Victor and from Joe Ritchie to tell us about the exciting news at the Reston Town Center Station, the next stop down the line. I have, you know, I almost don't want to do the presentation because that was so excellent. It really was. And it really does give you perspective on what's going on in this region. I mean, what Maggie just went through is actually more development than is going on in a lot of markets around the country. This is that, that de the development just in that area is beyond probably, you know, 70, 80 percent of the markets around the country. It is really unbelievable what's happening there. I was, I, I was actually quite blown away. Um, I, didn't real I knew there was a lot of activity, but I didn't realize the level of detail. Um, well, and what I'd like to do uh, before I begin is I wanted to, to, to thank, um, you know, the, uh, the Greater Reston Chamber, um, the City of Herndon, and uh, the people in the... Um, Really, they, they brought this, this, this together, Georgia and her team. Um, I really do appreciate being invited. This is only the second time I've spoken in Northern Virginia, so I am here quickly, so I, I, didn't, I didn't delay coming here. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off talking a little bit about the region itself and then kind of bring it in after that. It's really, um, it, it's, it's really a region, frankly, that I think uh, whose time has come. And what I mean by that is if you, if you came here, I came here 20 years, a little over 20 years ago, about 25 years ago. And when I came to the market, it was a market that was a little bit disparate. It wasn't really um, unified, but we're starting to unify now. Um, just if you think of the region itself between, and I'm gonna go greater, uh, the, the greater region, between Richmond and Baltimore. There are about six million people living in that region and about 3.3 million in the workforce in that region. If you wanna know how we sold Amazon, that's what we sold Amazon on. We didn't sell them on Arlington, we didn't sell them on DC, we sold them on the entire region, the entire workforce. This is the fifth largest region in the country. This is the fifth largest region in the country. That means that New York, Chicago, LA, you know, you know and then we're closely behind. I mean, we're right, we're right in that big five. It is, it is astounding um, what has happened here over the last quarter of a century. And if you think about the fact that Amazon decided to move here for the HQ2, they really kind of heralded um, a transition that was going on, but that wasn't on the radar. If you look at our numbers, I'm not going to go through them, but essentially our numbers in the, in the government contracting and direct government services ha has dropped substantially. Um, we are now in the 60-65% range now for commercial um, private sector companies. That is a transformation for this region. We were, a, we were dominated by the government um, just a quarter of a century ago. That's all changed now. And that's one of the reasons that Amazon is here. 
Innovation was created here. GPS, um, you know, go the Google mapping system wouldn't exist. Your iPhone wouldn't exist if it wasn't for all the technology that happened here. And that is really kind of made, given us a tremendous advantage. And you see on this chart, you know, we have 612,000 in our, in our, on our payroll in, um, in Fairfax County, of a, a county of about 1.2 million people. And what's so incredible about that is we also have 148,000 businesses. Arlington County, 229,000 people had 9,800 businesses. We have 148,000 businesses. That means that our businesses create business. When, when, when technology companies come and locate here, they, they create three to four times the number of jobs that, are direct, that they directly hire for. So Amazon coming here with 25,000 to 37,000 employees, they're going to create somewhere between 70,000, 85, 90,000 employees in this region. Just on room nights alone, we're anticipating 150,000 to 200,000 new room nights to this region because of Amazon's arrival. If you have a hotel right now, it's just going to get better. Um, <laughs> if you have a nice site for a hotel, you're going to be very pleased. Fairfax County has 118 million square feet, and our, our, our vacancy rate is really still healthy at 4, 14, about 14.4. Um, it's still real healthy. Um, we have about 50 million square feet um, in the pipeline uh, along the silver line at some stage. That, and actually, that 50 million square feet um, pales into compar in comparison of what's going to happen. But just to give you an idea of scale, if you look at Arlington County itself, its existing market is 40 million square feet. This is 50% higher than that. So the silver line projects. There's so much going on on the Silver Line right now, and I'm sure everybody's excited about it. Um, but if you look along the Silver Line itself in aggregate, you're looking at five, six, seven million square feet of development that's in the planning process or under construction right now. That is, that is a phenomenal amount of construction going on. And the great thing about it is it creates opportunities not just for um, the companies that reside in Fairfax County, but all the companies throughout the region. Um, the other day, um, earlier this week, actually early last week, we signed an interjurisdictional agreement uh, between 10 jurisdictions. We have been working on that for three or four years. We've been doing some things, um, kind of test marketing, kind of soft, I call it softening the target, but in a way testing the idea. Um, we would go to um, uh, South by Southwest down in Austin, Texas to recruit tech companies and it would be Prince William County, Arlington, Alexandria. We do things like Select USA which is the largest gathering from investors around the world which happens in Washington DC every year and we had, um, we had um, Arlington County, Alexandria DC, Prince George's County, Montgomery County actually all at the same place actually pitching together. I mean that is really something that was very different. What was so wonderful, though, is after Amazon happened, during the, during the process, we realized something. We realized that selling together was so much more powerful than selling alone. I mean, look, Ar let's, let's just admit it. Ar you know, Arlington's workforce, you know, pales in comparison to the regional workforce. And the power of all of those numbers actually is what really convinces um, companies that aren't in this region to come here. But then when you add to that, the 65 universities that are in the, you know, the, the greater Washington region. You throw that into the mix, and you don't have just an existing pipeline of talent, but you have a future pipeline of talent. And then you look at the, the school system. Not just, it's not just the Fairfax school system. It's not just the Hernan school system. It's, not just, it's every school system in Northern Virginia. The numbers are phenomenal. When they, when they, when they publish those lists, we're the envy of the country. And people and companies these days, they are thinking about that. The thing that we're working on now, which is what everybody's talking about here, is creating places. Uh, places where um, you can go, where you can live, work, play, and learn all at the same time. So um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what, you know, what was the, the secret to winning Amazon? Um, there was no secret to winning Amazon. It, it was actually something that I've, that I've already mentioned. If you look at our original application, it's online. Um, that original application included Fairfax County, Loudoun County, Alexandria, and Arlington. It, con it included four jurisdictions. It was the first time that an application was actually done um, by all of those organizations together. And what we did is we, 
work together. We solve problems together. We came up with the brand identity. The, 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 the brand that we chose was Innovation Lives Here. And that brand is now the brand of the NOVA EDA, which is the Northern Virginia Economic Development Alliance. And that's the group of the 10 organizations that have now joined together uh, to work together. But that, the process of working together actually broke down barriers between the jurisdictions. You know how that competition, you know, you just, we just have the tendency to want to compete. You know, we're Americans, we want to compete in everything. Um, but this was a way, working together, trying to figure out how to get it done, how to present our best um, light uh, to a client together. That was, not, that was not easy, that was hard work. But if you look at that application, you see how we worked through it after 250 pages. Um, and it really, if you, if you look at it even just from a visual standpoint, it really is unifying. It's unifying for the whole region. And the power of that has made um, our entire region more visible. You know, Fairfax County happens to be the largest jurisdiction in, the, in this Northern Virginia region, but it's made us all visible. And I think what we've really learned and what we realize is that that is really where our future lies. And I'm going to talk about these four things real quick, and then, and then I'll close, because I don't like to talk too long. I don't want to bore people, and they have other speakers. Um, but these are the things I, I think that will change our future. These are the things that are going to be shaping our future. That first box up there, innovation campuses. So when we, when we were working on the Amazon uh, proposal, there wasn't originally um, uh, an innovation campus in the proposal. What there was, was there was a proposal from the state of Virginia to take a billion dollars and set it aside to match a billion dollars that universities would raise um, in, their, in, in a location of their choosing to create innovation campuses. So it was really a proposal. Virginia Tech, when, after the state met with all the universities, Virginia Tech was the first one to raise their hand. They raised their hand and they said they would raise $250 million for a campus. By the way, the location of the campus wasn't necessarily going to be in, in Alexandria, guys. It might have been downstate. But what happened was, as the process moved along, a site, an opportunity came up in Alexandria. And it was great because Amazon was going to Arlington, and it would have been really sad if Alexandria didn't get something. So they kind of looked at it as a consolation prize, but I actually look at it as the real prize. Because that is going to be a production center for those bright minds that are going to be in all of these companies into the future. And so, so they are going to raise $250 million to match the state's $250 million. That's a half a billion. And then the private, working with the private sector, they're going to raise another half a billion. So that is going to be a billion dollar innovation campus. But um, not to be outdone, uh, George Mason University uh, decided to do an innovation campus in Arlington. So they're raising $125 million that's going to be matched by a $125 million from the state, so that's a quarter of a billion. And then they're expecting to raise a quarter of a billion from private sector businesses um, to push toward innovation. So that takes care of um, really a portion of Northern Virginia, but we're thinking that maybe one of these should be in Fairfax County now. Um, so we're talking to the universities that have not stepped up yet, um, and there's still $675 million, $625 million on the table to be matched. So there's still op a lot of opportunity there. But I think that innovation campus is really going to set us apart from a lot of places. Um, New York has the Technion campus on Roosevelt Island uh, that they did with Cornell University. Unbelievable. If you have not taken the boat tour in, um, in New York, it is a great tour to take because you get to see it from the river. And it is an amazing sight to see. Um, talent initiative. This year, uh, Fairfax County um, has put forward a million dollars for talent, talent initiative, 200,000 for re research and development, 800,000 for programming, and that 800,000 is going to continue each year going forward. And someone asked me today, is that a talent recruiter? Not quite. Um, it is actually somebody who is going to work with our private sector businesses, their HR departments, their talent departments, um, our universities, colleges, community colleges, and, and K through 12. They're going to work with our workforce uh, entities that are out there right now. And by the way, we're going to do this across all 10 jurisdictions. Every jurisdiction that signed on to that agreement, we want to, we want to do this across all 10 jurisdictions. 
I mentioned this to someone today and they go, well, it's going to be hard enough to do it in Fairfax County. I said, yeah, but the thing is, it's one labor market. Comstock is not asking, you know, I'm not, I can't hire anybody on the other side of that border. They're not doing that. They're trying to find talent and hire talent. So if we can create a system um, to retain our talent, to retrain our talent, to grow our talent, and to attract talent, we will have no equal in the world. So I, we believe that that's a very, very important initiative. The third is the regional partnership. I've been talking about that. The 10, ten jurisdictions working together. We right now are planning our first event together. Um, the state of Virginia um, organizes all the regional collaboratives around the state um, to go to these conferences where they meet site selectors. Site selectors are the guys that we get our leads from. Uh, for our uh, recruiting uh, from outside. So this is to bring all new business in. So we won't be competing with one another. We will actually be competing to bring business into the region. And the other thing is we have to select two people to go out of the 10 jurisdictions. Only two people get to go. So we right now are working through the process of how we go about selecting them because you know everybody wants to go first, right? Um, place making. We are um, really trying to create places. You know, Tyson's is a place, Reston is a place. Those are places that people recognize right now. But the amenities that you were just talking about, um, Maggie, those are the things that we need to put in place so that people will be drawn to that location. Um, you know, I, I remember hearing uh, Mayor Riley um, talk about um, Charleston, uh, North Carolina. Anybody been to Charleston? What, what a beautiful place, what a walkable place, what an enjoyable place. You should have heard this man talk about public spaces. He talked about public spaces like a preacher. I mean, he believed that public spaces should be consumed by everyone in the public, that, 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 that these special harbor areas should be for everybody, that these beautiful parks should be for everybody, and we should put them in places that are accessible. That is what placemaking is about, and not just those public experiences, but also the private experiences surrounding it. Sort of like, I always think about that, that, that town center in the middle of Mosaic surrounded by retail. You know, one of the reasons that it thrives, both thrive, is because there is a symbiotic relationship. Creating places like that, doing more of that. And so the, the effort that we're doing at the at Fairfax County Economic Development, we've actually reached out to the planning department and we're starting to work with them on guidelines, on how we can support, how we can work with our, our developers, how we work with tenants to support this concept. And, and the last thing that we really need to address is housing. No, no, housing is not an economic development function, but housing is becoming extremely important, particularly workforce housing that is affordable to our millennial kids, um, that's affordable to um, workers in the service industry. You know, we really have to think about how we produce housing in, in, on a scale, you know, that is, that, that fits people's income ranges. Because right now, a lot of housing that's being produced is on the high end, and that creates a certain kind of challenge. Now, there's also the issue of supply. And when we inhibit supply, we actually force up price. I mean, in microeconomics, right, you cut down supply, you raise demand, price goes up. So we also have to start considering those things. But I think these are five really important elements that are going to guide our future in this region. Um, I feel very fortunate uh, to have been selected for this position. Um, Jerry Gordon did a tremendous job while he was in this, while he was in this position. Um, I'm feeling big shoes. Um, I have ideas that are, that are different. Um, I have a, a different way of approaching things, um, but I think that it, that it is the perfect time um, for these ideas in, in, this, in this county, um, in this region. And I think that the regional part of all of this is really going to be the power. Because today, we don't just compete with um, San Francisco area, uh, Silicon Valley. We don't just uh, compete with the, the Cambridge, Boston area. We don't just compete with LA. You know, we actually compete with Bangalore, Shanghai, Tianjin. You know, we compete with these cities around the world now, London, Paris. We, when we're talking to companies, they're talking about expanding in those markets too. So we really are, it's no longer um, a U.S. competition, it's really a global competition. And if we're going to get on that stage, we have, to be, we have to have the biggest team that we can. And I think that this, this, these 10 jurisdictions, and hopefully in the future more, um, will be one of the things that really set us apart from everyone else. Thank you so much for having me here, and I know you have other speakers, so I'll, I'll step down now. Well, 
over the years, rest, I've been uh, pleased to associate with Reston Town Center for 30 years. I was hired so long ago, I, I can't remember when. Uh, but it has become a very powerful urban destination, one that is very connected and inspiring. Um, this shows you uh, an overview of the Reston Town Center area. The area out, uh, outlined in red is the urban core of Reston Town Center. Today that has about 3 million square feet of office space, about 3,000 residential units, and uniquely 450,000 square feet of retail space. The parks, squares, fountains, uh, public art and public spaces are world class. And we're in the process, if you look a little bit to the left, which is actually going south towards the metro station, you can see the area outlined called RTC Next, and I'm gonna tell you more about it. But why is this the most exciting time in the history of Reston Town Center? First, you see that little M on the far left side, the arrival of Metro. That is a total game changer, of course, for the entire region. Secondly, shown on this slide, you can see the Lidos headquarters in the purple right down here. And then upper left, you can see uh, Fannie Mae. Uh, Lidos, 276,000 square feet, their headquarters, they came to Reston Town Center years ago. They've just expanded and we're very excited about that expansion. Fannie Mae, uh, they're going to lease just under uh, 900,000 square feet and I'll tell you more about that project in the future. Uh, I, would, I should point out the Reston Town Center uh, transit station right here currently has 560 buses per day. That's an uh, astounding amount. And when you add in Metro to that, you add in the fact that 2% of the employee population bikes to work, and we have 15,000 people within a 15 minute walk, it begins to uh, tell you why Reston Town Center is such a unique location. One of the major corporate build suits I just mentioned, Lidos, 276,000 square feet. Uh, that'll be complete uh, Q1 of next year. RTC Next, which I'm gonna talk in detail about, uh, will have a million 50,000 square foot, two building office campus with uh, Fannie Mae occupying uh, over 850,000 square feet in that, and I'll give you more details. Those corporate headquarters there's no other location in the Washington metropolitan area right now that has two major corporate headquarters under construction. The world-class retail in Reston Town Center uh, is really uh, gaining momentum. We had a little stumble with paid parking. Some of you may have heard about that. Anybody? Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to say that after, you know, basically providing free parking for most of the time, and with the other initiatives I'm about to tell you about, that Reston Town Center has uh, substantially recovered from, from that uh, era. We currently have, as I've said, 450,000 square feet of retail. That's the equivalent of a regional mall without the anchors, okay? Nobody in this region has 450,000 square feet of unanchored retail. Uh, truly amazing uh, and hard to pull off. In yellow, you see 12 locations which are brand new retailers coming to Reston Town Center now. We have over 20 new retailers, uh, including these 12 that have come in the last year or so, that are in negotiations uh, for new places in Reston Town Center. These are a couple of them, North Italia, Bar Taco, uh, Masons, uh, Lululemon, Balducci's, Glossary, Candle, and more. Uh, some of those have been here over the last year or so. We have about 12 more on the way. Placemaking has been a critical part of Reston Town Center from day one. And I'm happy to say that these pictures uh, uh, indicate what was the number one uh, visit Fairfax uh, Instagram uh, for all of summer this year. It was of the pavilion at Fountain Square. 
And uh, those are popsicles, which some of you have, may have seen. Uh, public art is a big part of Reston Town Center. Maggie Parker also heads Public Art Reston. Uh, and we're very delighted to uh, partner with Public Art Reston on many events. Uh, another part of the placemaking is taking place at Freedom Square. You can't see all the details here, but this was renovated. It has bocce ball, it has uh, the cornhole games, it has various nice places uh, to rest and visit. But it's just a small part of an overarching placemaking initiative that's going to make what was old new again. Reston Town Center events, we've just come through an amazing summer season where we had approximately 75 events over the course of the summer, various concerts, uh, plenty of community events. We had a special uh, Dog Thursday uh, that was uh, a tremendous hit. Um, and we're just now entering the uh, holiday season, of course, and that is the time when Reston Town Center really shines on behalf of the community with the uh, Thanksgiving parade, the holiday ceremony that involves a tree lighting, and many more events uh, uh, covering a, a broad uh, spectrum of activity. RTC Next is the final phase that Boston Properties will develop in Reston Town Center. Uh, the metro sa station is at the south or bottom end. You can see it right under the phase two indication. That dotted line div uh, divides phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one is under construction. It will be just approximately under two million square feet and phase two will be approximately two and a half million square feet. These are round numbers. Um, Phase one will include A and B, which are two office towers, which I've already shown you a picture of. Uh, that is the Fannie Mae office buildings. There's also a substantial amount of spec space in there. Uh, I'll describe the rest of it to you uh, in future slides. This is one of them. This is phase one of RTC Next. The two office buildings, these two buildings right here, are a million fifty thousand square feet. Fannie Mae will occupy eight hundred and fifty thousand square feet. The top roughly six or seven floors of building B, about two hundred thousand square feet. We have current activity on that, even though this won't deliver till Q1 2022. This shows those buildings as you would look at them from the toll road, and you can see on the lower left hand corner here as you, or lower right hand corner as you look at it, uh, the metro station, it's basically right on top of the metro station. And those, that's a 28 story building in the front and a 20 story building in the back. Very interestingly, they're podium parked. There are five levels of podium parking which greatly elevates the buildings. There are also five levels of below grade parking and Maggie's tremendous hole uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, ours is pretty doggone big as well. This shows you uh, Tower A on the left looking south across. You see the metro on the left hand side there. That's where metro comes across. Um, and that window plaza is that opening here that we're looking through. This show you, shows you some other views, not only of the Window Plaza, but of Park North, which is uh, associated. You're basically looking at Park North at where a future hotel will be. Speaking of that, that is Block C. Cooper Carey was the architect. It'll be 270 keys. Uh, all told in phase one uh, of this development will be about 100,000 square feet of retail. Uh, and uh, the hotel will be about a 13-story building. Very interestingly, this will have two-story retail. And you can see balconies on this side and also on the far corner. Uh, the outside experience there is going to be really emphasized and very unusual to have two-story retail. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, Block D residential. This is actually two buildings. This doesn't look like it, but that's 15 stories, and this is a 30-story building. Uh, 500 units total, 
48,000 square feet of retail. And this is planned to start in 2021 and deliver in 2023. By the way, the hotel is planned to start next year and deliver in 2022. So that view that I showed you a while back of all those beautiful buildings, that'll all be finished by 2023. And uh, when you think about what that adds to Reston Town Center and to the region, and the quality of it is quite amazing. Um, I want to end by promising you that Reston Town Center has some powerful announcements coming soon regarding the types uh, and quality of world-class tenants, world-class corporations uh, that you would want to see in uh, not only Fairfax County, the Dulles Corridor, uh, but our entire region. They are the very best technology companies in the world. I want to apologize also because we try to get representatives from Brookfield, Tishman and Wakefield, and JBG, and we were unable to get them. I personally, it was a lot to cover. I personally didn't feel comfortable covering that, but we do hope to cover that, I believe, in a uh, future meeting. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. And uh, I think our, our next speaker is up. If we don't consider what is coming and plan for it and consider um, how we ensure that that prosperity is available to everyone, we are not going to realize all the goals that we talked about. And I can say that um, Cornerstone serves 16,000 people each year, um, just in the local Reston, Herndon, Dulles Corridor region, nearly 5,000 children, 2,500 families who come through our doors in just a you know, few square miles of this location. And I see other colleagues, uh, David from the YMCA and others who are here, that make up what is about 10% of the population, your nonprofit social profit community that is out there thinking about this inclusion and how do we ensure that everybody is able to navigate the prosperity and take advantage of it? How do we ensure that that's available to everyone? Um, I can say that this is a um, thriving and compassionate region. There isn't, again, a, 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 an organization, a company, business leader in this community who doesn't understand the importance of serving the needs of our community and doesn't work with uh, organizations like ours to get people involved, get your employees involved and help them understand. So the compassion is there. And I think what we um, want to do and Cornerstones and others is trying to do is ensure that we plan for the future. Too much of Fairfax County is a tale of two cities. We serve people, as Georgia mentioned, who are homeless. We serve people who are very, have very low incomes. Um, many of the people who are working in the jobs that we're talking about, we're talking about people who are going to show up at work every day in the hotels that are here today and the hotels that are coming, people who are going to work in the retail. We're talking about um, working families in this region who earn 200 to 300% above poverty, or who are somewhere below the median income, who can't afford to pay their rent, their child care, or figure out how they're going to make it on a day to day basis. And so, if those are the families that we work um, with to really think about what's next for them. And you've seen so many of the examples um, a minimum wage worker needs to work 177 hours per week to afford the cost of rent in Reston. Talking about rents at 19,000 a year, child care if anybody knows, 18,000 a year for an infant and there's no Pell Grants or student loans or anything to help families afford that so it relies on the work of nonprofits and our, and our corporate partners sort of creating the opportunities through what programs we have to help people do that. Um, but these, the folks that we serve are working in jobs that matter to all of us, They're the banks, the retail, 
they're working to provide um, support driving the buses that take our kids to school every day, taking care of our parents and some of the senior centers. So those are the, the people that we see when I look at this opportunity, how do we plan ahead to do that? And there's a lot that has been done. Um, part of what we, we see, and we're so proud of Fairfax County, and as uh, Victor Amazon uh, Hoskins comes to Fairfax County, um, I would say that you are here at a really exciting time because the county has made a commitment to something called One Fairfax. And One Fairfax, both in our schools and in the county, says how are we going to look at resources, how are we going to look at the future of this community and open up opportunity to everyone and ensure that residents have what they need to make ends meet and to see the kind of opportunity and we see that in areas that affect quality of life for all of us and I've touched on some of that but I'll start with transportation because you've seen the maps you've seen where the metro stops are coming in and that's incredible that's going to help open up opportunity for people to get to new jobs but it also means we have to pay attention to the connections, to the bus rapid transit, and we need to pay attention to the cost because the people we work with won't be able to afford the metro cards. They won't be able to afford those fares on a regular basis. And I will tell you at our Herndon Neighborhood Resource Center, Bill Threlkeld, my colleague, is here in a center that we run right down in downtown um, Herndon, two miles from Dallas Airport. If you're there and you need to get out a sh to a shift at Dallas Airport to start your evening shift, you would take a bus, it would take you 93 minutes by bus from Herndon to go two miles to Dallas Airport today. Because you have to go, you have to walk, if you don't have a car from your neighborhood, <coughs> to a bus step, pick up a connector, go to the Herndon Monroe Station, pick up the Dallas bus, and then get out to your shift. If you're starting on the morning shifts for all of the um, TSA workers and the other folks out there, um, same thing. It's a 98-minute commute, but you won't be able to drop your kids off at childcare because childcare doesn't open until seven. So the people we work with, and the, and what we try to do, and as we think about how to take advantage it's ensuring that Victor and his colleagues and that all of us as leaders in this community are doing the kind of planning that says how do we connect the transportation the arrival of Metro with the real needs of people and community Victor you mentioned housing housing is you know the number one issue and you've said it the cost of housing the um, uh, uh, availability of housing in Fairfax County we've not kept up with it and I've been very um, proud to work with uh, John Boylan and many others in the room to have delivered a, a new community-wide housing strategic plan to Fairfax County. The Board of Supervisors has adopted it. And they've also said they are committed to finding the resources that will enable us to provide the kind of housing we're talking about. Just over the next 15 years, we need 15,000 homes for people that earn about 70,000 and less a year, including the people who are living at 15% of AMI, people who are coming out of shelters or working minimum wage, to our working class, to the employees that each of us sees at work every day. And just to do that, we've identified resources, we've identified better planning tools. I was arguing with my good friend, friend Shane Murphy before the meeting, no. how do we ensure that as we're building, sorry Shane, how, how do we ensure um, that we're not only looking at sort of what's coming and meeting the needs of this workforce that's going to be at the median income, but the folks that need it today? How do we ensure that we do not lose the market rate housing that is currently available here in Herndon or in Reston. So those are plans we have in place. There are a lot of opportunities, opportunities to change uh, zoning now, opportunities to look at how we repurpose some of the commercial buildings that don't fit anymore into schools and other opportunities. Another area that's so critical, and I think about this every day when I think about the workforce, not just the resources for your employees who need childcare, and we're proud we offer a um, child care center that serves um, primarily working families, low income working families, so they can go to work and be at the jobs that are, are so important. But also how do we think about ensuring a community here in Fairfax where every child succeeds and thrives from birth to career? 
what are we doing to look into our communities and look at the schools um, for Title I schools right here in Herndon, another four in Reston, which means that a majority of the students there um, go hungry at some point or another. Their family would be eligible for services. And yet within that, there's incredible opportunity. We know kids are graduating from um, our schools at a high rate, it's so important, um, but we also know that there are kids that we're leaving behind, and that's really not acceptable in Fairfax County. So how do we begin to partner with it to think about internships, think about the ways that we can do some of that? So when I look at this great, um, incredible potential and know how hard all of you work to see um, a community that that values and looks at all of our <coughs> residents, all of the people who come to work for. I think there are th some things we can do to continue to ensure the promise, and it's why I'm so proud to serve on the board of the Dulles Chamber and the Reston Chamber um, to be able to kind of think in this region how we're putting that together, and I'd leave you with just a couple of things. Um, I've said before, this is a compassionate community, and the, the potential to draw on the innovation and the ideas for, for our companies that are coming here to work with the nonprofit sector, for you to think about corporate social responsibility. There'll be new people coming in, finding the things that they can have an impact, and I think that is, a, is, is so hugely positive because what it does is ensures that people understand the full range of need in this community. Um, right over in Reston Town Center, there's a little homeless shelter that was built back in 1987. And the community grew up around it, and it is a gem of the center, and it has offered so much, 700 people a year go through that shelter, our shelter, and it's about to be rebuilt as part of some of the phased redevelopment. But we don't want to just rebuild the shelter, we want to build housing for the people that you're seeing on the metro stops, people who are living in tents on the streets, people who could go to apartments tomorrow if we found a way to make some room for some of that. So I think that's a great opportunity. I would call on this uh, community, I think the advocacy that we can do together to ensure the county is um, committed to delivering the resources needed uh, for affordable housing that, that's in the plan and just the opportunity to work together in the future um, to see some of these things and make sure that um, we are looking at opportunity for everybody. So thank you. Start off, Maggie, uh, working for Comstock. I'm, uh, one of the observations I have, you guys from Ashburn to Wheeling and at many other places, You've made an investment not just in buildings, but in people. And also looking at what you've done on spec. I mean, so you must be pretty optimistic. Can you talk about the investment and what you see for this region? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you for the question, John. Uh, Comstock is a, uh, has a very big footprint, but it's a rather small company. And um, its uh, owners are, well, two of the owners are born and raised in Fairfax County and another has lived here for quite some time. Um, they've always had a strong feeling about the region. Um, the opportunity to partner with Fairfax County on the what we feel is some of the most uh, prime land in Reston, that, that wheelie exit where it kind of sits elevated and is a true landmark on the way from Dulles to downtown. Um, it was an incredible opportunity and um, as developers, they were willing to take a calculated risk, and they have invested heavily um, in spec buildings. Um, we started Reston Station at the same time that we broke ground at our Loudon Station project, which is at the Ashburn Station. That is a is a you know as you know was built on farmland. It was more of a greenfield development, um, five story you know, beautiful luxury apartment buildings versus the um, redevelopment that we're doing in Reston with, with high-rise uh, concrete buildings. But again, big investments, and both of those were done when there was, um, 
we weren't even beginning to turn out of the recession. Uh, Reston Station was, the, those were the first cranes swinging in Washington after 2008. So anyway, um, bravo to them. They are willing to take a risk and uh, find great partners to work with, dive deep into the communities they're building, share the resources, share our staff and resources with folks like Cornerstones. Um, thus far, it's all a-okay. Thank you, Maggie. Victor, we uh, appreciate you coming out. If you can come up and take a, a question here. One of the concerns is you had a slide up there, the top five had wonderful ideas, but there's no transportation, no mobility. Mm -hmm. I think some of those are probably part of your solution and part of the areas you'll address. Can you talk about why mobility and transportation isn't there and what you plan to see in the future for that? Fantastic. Thank you very much. So um, the discussion was really around the, the transit infrastructure itself. It was around the silver line. The silver line is, um, you know, as Joe put it, is really the piece that really has made the difference for this entire region. I mean, connecting it directly to D.C. I mean, when we open up that, that rail station from Dulles that's going right into D.C., it, it will change the way that people think about getting around the region. And people aren't necessarily going to take that entire trip, but every place along there becomes an opportunity for development. That's why so much is coming forward right now. Um, I, I cut my teeth actually early in my career on the rail in Los Angeles and I remember when I told someone I was working on the red line, the first line in Los Angeles after like 40 years, I remember them laughing and going like, well, what is that? And the thing is, it is now the thing that Los Angeles is just getting hold of right now. They really, have, there's a massive amount of rail development going on in that region now. And they, the good thing is that we didn't find out too late. I mean, we are really at a great point right now where we can concentrate our development at our transit stations and then offer transit options that include, you know, scooter and, you know, when I see these kids on scooter, I'm just blown away, um, motorized skateboards, I'm like, okay, but bikes, walk, run, um, the, the, amount of, the amount of mobility really these days translates to your ability to attract a tenant. Um, it, it translates to your ability to retain a tenant. Um, the office parks now are suffering all over the nation, not just in this region, but all throughout the nation, particularly with product from the 80s and the 90s. Um, they have to reposition themselves. The great thing is, if you're, in a, if you're within a mile of a station area you, and you're building, you probably are in, 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 uh, in, in great shape. You go too far beyond that, your vacancy rate starts shooting up. And, and if you look at the, the real estate in this entire region, not just, not just in you know, Fairfax County, not just in Herdon, Reston, all over the region, the further you go away from transit station, the further um, your, um, your ability to run a pro forma because your vacancy shoots through the roof. Um, but mobility is critical uh, these days, and it's what attracts uh, the, the youthful crowd, too. So, thank you. Thank you. Joe, uh, so as I look around, right, read the newspapers, not to get political, but you see the problems they're having in L.A. and San Francisco, right, the needles, the drugs, the, all the problems. You think about Chicago with the uh, shootings every weekend, you hate to see those numbers. And then you come out to the East Coast, you look at New York and New Jersey, there's some real problems out there. When you go out and talk to folks around the country, uh, they must be pretty open and receptive or can't believe what we're able to achieve. Can you talk about some of the things you've heard and, and how uh, you think we'll grow in the future? I have to say this is not really my topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that um, in the 30 years I've been involved with Reston Town Center, we have always sold the region and Fairfax County first. I got in a lot of trouble back in 1992 when I put together a brochure, Victor, you may not, you may remember this, where I compared Reston Town Center at, at its inception with opportunities in Washington, D.C. And we showed the tax rates and we showed the school systems and we, we did the things that really were considered a little bit of a faux pas back then, but it ended up bringing out a, a company that was then called Anderson Consulting. And they came because of that brochure. We printed 5,000 brochures, we sent them out, 
and it was really for an audience of four or five executives that would take the time to read it, understand it, and respond to it. And Anderson Consulting, well, now Accenture, was one of those firms. So, and we, we did include, you know, a full range of statistics about these socioeconomic advantages, but, you know, that was a very long time ago. Today, it's a little bit of a different ball game. And I do think that it's, that whatever's happening at the socioeconomic level, I think it's about attracting, retaining, and maximizing the productivity of a world-class workforce. And if your location can demonstrate that you can provide that, you're gonna win. And that's what happened with Amazon HQ2 for the region and for Ar Arlington and Alexandria. And that's what's happening right now in Reston Town Center and the Silver Line Corridor. And even with the, the issues that have been so uh, passionately presented uh, with some of the issues that we have, uh, I'm, I'm con really uh, convinced that our future is very bright and uh, that good things are ahead for us. So, thank you. So when the thought that Amazon might actually come here, and in fact to our region, because we were pretty optimistic it would be uh, by the CIT building, you know, I turned to Kerry and said, Kerry, th there are some real problems out at their HQ1. And there's social issues and concerns, you know, can we handle those? And she assured me that we're gonna have to roll up our sleeves and come up with some plans. But one of the things that Carrie talked to me about was the difference, difference between equality and equity. And I was always struck by that, and I've learned and heard it repeated before, but can you kind of share with us a little with the difference between equality and equity and why it's important in your business? And I, I would um, add to the question that you just ask Joe because I agree with you 100% in terms of the promise of this community and if I didn't say that that um, but I think it's precisely because of partnerships with nonprofit and community-based organizations that we're in neighborhoods that we're in schools that we are out there every day helping to shore up some of the areas and ensuring that we have um, schools that are succeeding and and communities that feel connected and know where to go for resources so I always want to say that because it takes us continually to do that so equity um, you know we all grew up many of us on, on the issue of equality right and driving the, the playing field making sure that everybody had opportunity um, to the same whether it's applying for a job or applying for other things and I think what one Fairfax has recognized um, in Fairfax County is this idea that equity is really talking about how do we um, unleash the the potential of this region and the only way we can do that is by unleashing the potential that's inside every family and every opportunity. Um, we understand it best in the school system. Many of us, we know that kids learn in different ways. So there are accommodations that are made. Some kids need extra time on a test to take. Some kids are um, auditory learners. And so we've become very used to sort of giving what people what they need to succeed. That's what equity means in the region, and as we apply it here and thinking about that, it is ensuring that there is housing opportunities or ensuring that there are um, uh, plans in place to serve the families who are working in the hotels, just as the families who are coming that are gonna be you know, at the C-suite level and the ones that are really driving the work in the, in the <coughs> middle class. And so there's a lot of work that's been done, but it really um, helps us think differently um, we talk about rising all boats. Um, that really can be true. And there's some great work that's been done by the county as it looked at the equitable profile, the equity profile for the county, and realized that our future is being driven by um, persons of color, immigrant communities who are coming here, and the need to ensure that we're creating the pathways for education, job opportunities, and ensuring that they remain connect, you know, connected in our communities, and that's the, the work. So.